Sometimes in life we're not sure what we should be doing for a living. And when we're in our beginning stages of our career, we're not sure what that might be. When we look at things, when we think about things, when we feel things, it's not always what reality is. If we're studying in college, if we're studying in high school, if we're still in junior high, we still have a lot of life left to live. The challenge though for a college student today is moving themselves out of the college mentality of I'm a kid into the mature mentality of I'm a mature adult who has to provide for myself, provide for myself a living, a shelter, some food, a vehicle usually at this time in life, and openly some friends who are going to be in a good mood to play with on the weekends. When I talk about these things, I'm always reminded of the fact that within my college days, I have very few people that I'm still connected with, although I'm sure we will be very welcoming and honoring, for the most part, of each other if we ran into each other or if we connected on something like, God forbid, Facebook. But I say that because most of the people in my industry at my age and my level of education, not necessarily clearly at my station level, are people who use Twitter and LinkedIn. Most of the people that I know who have Facebook monstrous accounts are either women who have incredible social skills, like the woman I'm in love with, or basically a person of famous capabilities and authorship who can bring themselves as many followers as they need. And that's great. But in the old days and old ways of marketing, our goal was to always take that social media technology and point it to our own personally owned websites to promote ourselves. So when men who are in their 50s, like I've met before at certain events that I used to speak at before I lost most of my life in, well, difficulties and strife of cybercrime and identity theft and police brutality and mobbing and stalking issues that have been facing my life for the past three to five years, I can tell you that the monsters who keep stealing from me are probably the same monsters that are hacking me or they're just new people who said, let's just jump on the bandwagon and screw this man over out of jealousy. You see, the sadness of people in their 20s is that they're not really thinking how they look to a man like me who's, well, in his 50s and have lived a lot of life, have endured his own son going from junior high or elementary school, basically through adulthood, and all the antics that a man who's been a father has seen a waywardly child endure and, well, get through and mature from. But in the late stages of a man's life, he is full of wisdom. And wisdom does, unfortunately, most of the time come with age or with experience. And a seasoned man or a seasoned woman, like some of my friends, of age 50 and better does have some concept, especially if they're a business person, about how networking should and shouldn't go and how business exchanges do and don't flow and how people just don't get how to use their social 3D or in-person networks to the best of their abilities. What I learned and what I've taught in my marketing strategic alliance programs is that people often don't target the right demographics for their products, their programs, or their services. That's their first mistake usually. The second thing that they fail to do is practice proper time management, where they're really scheduling how they use their time, especially if they're a small business owner or a micro business owner like we like to call them, or someone who's a leader of a very small business organization where they have maybe three, four employees. There are definitely larger companies that fit into those educationally oriented terminologies about businesses. But the truth is, our life is revolving around our own selves. And our own selves are required to know what we need every minute of the day. So if you're trying to put yourself together after you've studied some esoteric thing like women's studies or gender studies or, I don't know, some veterinary thing, you may not rise to the level of education or the level of financial station that your parents have. What I'm most amazed with is how many alcoholic shops are on a college campus, but exactly where they're located is not the issue, but how much people spend almost every day now in a time of COVID, but how much they spend on the weekends. $10 for a cover here, $50 to $100 on beers for their entire friends network, and openly they just blow through money, like it's, well, going out of styles or grows on trees. For a person who's homeless, we're not in struggle all the time, but we're often fighting the society that wants to move us away from, well, society. I don't know how people expect homeless people to get back into society if we're not allowed to interact with society at the level or at the place that we're at right now. 
You see, if you had to take the time to talk with me based on whatever things you want to talk about, you might be surprised on how intelligent I can be. But you also might be stupid about what you should and shouldn't write down because, frankly, you're not as seasoned as me. I lived my life in less than 20 hours a week. I had time on Fridays for my, well, wife, if you will, and my son, if you please. So I don't have to prove anything to anyone in my mind because I've already proven my life. I lived a good, solid life serving plenty of clients who stayed with me for five to seven and sometimes eight years in a row. That meant I knew how to make relationships with not only the student in one of my programs, but their families or their corporations. So I don't have to keep pissing myself that I sort of monkeyed a job when I was losing my life at Eli Lilly, which is a huge, monstrous corporation that takes up 10 plus 12 city blocks in, well, a large city like Indianapolis and has stations around the world, even in Japan. But what I'm saying to you is if you're not pleased with your life where it is right now, that all you have to do is decide to change your life and simply walk out the door. It's that simple. You pack a few things for the road and you walk out the door. Because that rent check that's due at the beginning of the month will, well, still be due at the end of next month. Or the beginning of next month. Or whenever the hell it's due in the middle of the month, like mine used to be. When I lived in a marvelous townhouse that I love more than anything. It was a beautiful place and I was so fortunate to stay there for almost 10 years. Possibly almost 11. Because I had a good quality relationship with my landlord, Steve Schutz of, well, Steve Schutz Builders. And it was a small four-unit kind of place. And it was marvelous because it was a family-oriented place and people were kind, neighbors were good, and nobody was stealing anything from me. But the truth is in life we have to know what's what. We have to know who's who and we have to know how to make a long-term relationship that gives us constant income month after month. We also have to learn how to make mailbox money. And mailbox money is that check that comes because we're referring something that we personally use that is a good quality product or service that benefits us. And if you can't figure out how to do that, then, well, you're going to have some difficulties in retirement because most people do not make a solid paycheck that's high enough over the course of, well, say, 20 years of life to actually retire today. It's a misnomer retirement. And only people who did a dot-com sale before we couldn't do that anymore or other people who get really, really wealthy for some reason because of their profession or their skill sets make billions enough to retire. Most people today who are going into the workplace need to have video education where they're showing themselves off because LinkedIn pretty much gets rid of the idea of not having a photograph on a resume. That sort of monkeyed some people, especially if you're sort of modest or humbled in how you feel about you or how you like to dress or if you're sort of crazy in your well, fashion or attire. But in truth, that network has been around since, gosh, at least 2000, possibly 2001 for sure, and I've been on it that long. And it has changed a great deal. There's a pay-to-play version and there's a free version. It's hard to say whether or not we're being impeded by these social networks that are using telephone lines across the internet to share information. We have to be careful of that because they're not allowed to interfere with our rights to pursue life, liberty, and happiness, and frankly, income or revenue for our business. Thanks for listening.